Hi, my name's Shona and I'm a scientist at Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble make a wide range of household goods, such as laundry powder, toothpaste, nappies and makeup. I currently work in hair colour research and development in Procter & Gamble. Research and development involves taking a consumer need or desire and developing a new technology to meet this need. For example, recently consumers told us they wanted to have a faster hair colouring experience. So we developed a 10 minute execution called Perfect 10. For one brand, we can have up to 200 different shades. To make these different shades, we can use around 20 different starting molecules. These starting molecules are uncoloured, and only when mixed with the peroxide do the chemical reactions begin to occur and the molecules become coloured. Therefore, in order to make a new shade, we need to understand the chemical reactions occurring. Our 20 starting molecules are based on benzene rings and are not coloured. The main groups that are substituted onto the benzene ring are electron-rich groups, for example, amino and hydroxyl groups. These electron-rich groups push electrons into the ring system. There are two types of starting molecules, primaries and couplers. Primaries are generally ortho or para-substituted benzenes, whereas couplers are usually meta-substituted benzene rings. Molecules appear coloured because they absorb energy from the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Varying the number of double bonds and the types of groups substituted on the benzene rings allow us to control the colour. Due to the starting molecules only having three double bonds, these molecules absorb light in the UV area and therefore don't appear coloured. When the developer is mixed with the tint, the hydrogen peroxide initiates an oxidation reaction. This results in loss of electrons from the starting molecules, which allow the benzene rings to react to form larger compounds. These larger compounds contain either two or three benzene rings and therefore lots of double bonds, so they will now absorb light in the visible region. Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm also a scientist at Procter & Gamble and I specialise in shade formulation of hair colourants. To create a shade, we have to understand all the possible colour formation reactions involved during the oxidation process when there are many dyes. The average shade contains seven dyes. This is usually two to three primaries and four to five couplers. A hair colourant contains two key components. The tint, which contains the ammonia and the small dye molecules, and the colour developer, which contains the hydrogen peroxide. Once we have a shade that has passed our lab testing, we get this checked in-house by our stylists in our global test salons, and then we work on scaling that shade up from a one kilogram batch size to a one tonne batch size in the plant. The scaled up process makes up to 100,000 tonnes of product every year which is packaged and sent out to shops in boxes like this one. This allows you to see the process from getting a shade from the lab to the shelves in the shops. By applying the science knowledge and skills we learned at school and university, we're able to develop a deep understanding of how our products work. This also provides us the basis for developing new products which exceed consumers' ever-growing expectations. Knowing that you can walk into a supermarket or chemist and see a hair colourant sitting on a shelf that you helped develop is a really satisfying feeling. Mm -hmm.